And I just want to go through super basic stuff that you guys know how to do already. But what we'll do is we'll download some data from GBIF, unpack it, trim it down, put it into QGIS. <coughs> Salud. I'm not going to go through um, niche modeling because you need a week or two or six months for that. You can take the course starting in January. But we'll at least get you to the point of points on maps. Okay, it's easy, it won't take much time. So what I would suggest you do, uh, or request that you do, is that you go to GBIF. So the landing page looks like that. Okay, it's just gbif.org. Okay, so go to GBIF. And once you're at the landing page, hit Occurrences, okay, and that, wow, that's weird. Um, I think I'm in a problem with, let's see, there we go. So you've got the search panel here, and you've got the results panel here, okay? And all I want you to do, you're going to have to open account and an, an account you just fill in basic information, and that allows you to download. All I want you to do is pick some species that's interesting to you. You can do this from your room, or you can do it from the, the lobby area of the hotel. But some species of interest, right? Um, so here's the crow that flies over the hotel all the time. And you can see there are 200,000 records of that one species available to us. And we can look at a map. <coughs> Salud. So you see we have, in general, it's an African endemic. There are probably some data errors. And then these may actually be correct extralimital occurrences. I don't know. Um, all that I want you to do is pick some species, hopefully something a little more interesting than the boring Afri Africa wide crow. Pick some neat endemic, pick something that you're interested in. Hopefully it will have at least one record. Okay, and all you do is go to this download button and you get to this page. Several of you have done this. Okay, anybody see something that's just really fabulously stupid on this page? Huh? Okay, that, I'll explain that to you. That's not a problem. What do you see that's fabulously stupid here? Ever heard of a tab delimited CSV? <laughs> Come on, guys. Right? If it's tab delimited text, it's tab delimited text. CSV is comma separated values. Yeah. Right? Sometimes it's hard to see clearly when you have your head up your butt. Right? I mean, just, I don't know what anybody's thinking. But you have these three opportunities. Species list is really simple. Let's say you searched on Rwanda. It would give you a list of the species that were represented in your query, but not the individual data records. Darwin Core Archive. You guys haven't gotten an introduction to Darwin Core. I'm not going to give it to you. You can Google it, but Darwin Core is an information infrastructure for biodiversity data. It is an ISO standard architecture for that information. It's essentially universally used. Um, if you are involved in building biodiversity data sets and don't use Darwin Core, you're basically wasting your time. Okay? So Darwin Core has field names, descriptions, etc. for essentially complete description of a biodiversity data record. So <coughs> 
if you download this, you get something 150, 200 data fields, <coughs> which for any record, for any one record, will be mostly empty. Okay? It'll have all these useless geological things like, like stratum and all of that. I don't even, you know. Wow, she didn't react. Uh, she laughed, but I thought she was going to throw something at me. Or you can go... <laughs> Or you can go for the simple version and notice the difference in size, okay? 227 megabytes versus 90. Um, for what we are doing, all you need is the simple, okay? For what you might do if you were doing a complete, complete data cleaning, you know, essentially getting ready for publication, you might want the Darwin Core Archives. <coughs> Okay, there are things in there like maybe you have the country name, but there's also a field in the complete version for verbatim country name. And most all the time, the interpreted country name is the correct one, but not always. Okay? Or there'll be a locality name or a verbatim locality name. And the verbatim allows you to go back and see exactly what is on that label or what was originally reported. And sometimes you can catch errors and fix them by going back to the verbatim. So this is something you want to do when you're, when you're going kind of full bore professional. But the simple is a subset of the complete. And so for right now, just get the simple. You don't need more. And all you do is hit it. You have to say that you understand that while data from gbif.org is free and open, please remember, remember that by downloading this data, you are agreeing to abide by the GBIF user agreement. And if you use the data, to cite it appropriately. Please make sure your citation includes the unique DOI. The use of properly formatted data citations ensures scientific transparency and re reproducibility and enables proper attribution of credit to the data providers. Blah, blah, blah. Okay? So you hit understood. And in a moment, it takes me to my processing page. And you can basically see that the download has started and it's being processed. Expect up to three hours for the download to complete. Most will complete within 15 minutes. The important thing is that DOI up there, Digital Object Identifier. And as soon as this finishes, a download button will appear. Okay? You can also, you can also go to the button that is your account. And you see it gives your profile, but it has this, this tab for downloads. And I actually use this quite a bit because I can go back in time and see all the downloads that I've done over the years. Okay? All with their original DOIs and all that. But what I did for showing you guys tomorrow is I downloaded Boring Old Corvus Albus, the Pied Crow, and then two really cool micro-endemics. <laughs>